Hello friends, Ash here. Welcome back to Gin Tints. Hope you're doing well. Today, it's time for another buying guide. And the fragrance line that we're taking a look at is none other than Le Mans from Jean-Paul Gaultier, which I guess if you're pronouncing it correctly, it would be Le Mans, Le Mans Le Parfum. But we're gonna keep with Le Mans. That's, that's what we're rolling with here today. So this is a massive, line of fragrances, just so many different scents. And I'm not gonna cover every single one of them because most of them are really close to impossible to find unless you wanna go to eBay and pay jacked up prices. And also the video would be like three hours long and I'm not doing that. And you're not gonna stay and watch that anyway. But I am going to cover each fragrance that you could realistically find in retail stores or discounters, at least if you're in the US, which is still 12 fragrances, so a lot to talk about. And I'll have each of them linked in the description below. Feel free to check them out down there. And even though it's not a Jean-Paul Gaultier and it's not a Lamal, my fragrance, Blue Ridge, or my other fragrances, Terra Nova and Jet Black Enigma, you can find these in every fragrance outlet, every Perfumania store in the United States. Stop in, check them out. Terra Nova nominated for Men's Fragrance Release of the Year. Or you can order them online, which is also linked below, and you can use the code GENTSENSE for 20% off on any of those. Deep dive into them all, here we go. So we're gonna do this in chronological order. We're starting at the first release and working our way forward. Again, there are a bunch of fragrances, flankers in this line that are not part of this list, not part of this guide because they're discontinued, very difficult to find or impossible to find depending on which one we're talking about. Starting off in 1995, we've got the original Le Mal. This is done by perfumer Francis Kirkjohn, who went on to do, of course, Maison Francis Kirkjohn, the most popular fragrance release from that house, his own house, Baccarat Rouge 540. And he's now the in-house perfumer for Christian Dior. So he kicked things off in a big way with this release here. Le Mal is one of the quintessential designer fragrances for men from the 90s. It has lavender, mint, cinnamon, vanilla, orange blossom, and tonka as some of the notes in the fragrance. And it's known for being powdery and sweet, a little bit uh, soapy as well. It's a great daytime or evening fragrance, and I think it's office safe as well. A lot of people wore this as a date night or clubbing scent when it came out, as well as being just overall a, a great day-to-day -day scent, like I said. Nice performance on this one as well, especially for an eau de toilette concentration. But I would say for the majority of people, unless you have an attachment to the fragrance because you wore it in the past, like I have with Aqua de Joe, you probably wanna go with a different fragrance in the line. I think you can likely find one that'll work a little better for you. But don't take that as me saying that it's a bad fragrance. If you like it, if you like to wear it, absolutely go for it. And then we have Le Beau Mall from 2013. Yeah, we skipped that far <laughs> into the future. There were other fragrances between those dates. Again, they're just not easy at all to find. So this one, 2013, same perfumer as the original. And uh, this one has been off and on difficult to find. It hasn't popped up at discounters for a minute, but as of this video, it's readily available, so I'm including it. Mint, wormwood, lavender, orange blossom, and musk, some of the notes in this fragrance. It is basically, or supposed to be, a freshened up version of the original with more of a, a green tinge to it and not quite as powdery sweet. Now, this one can be a bit divisive. Some people find this to be a little bit animalic feeling, a little bit off-putting. I myself don't think that it's animalic. To me, it is green, watery, fresh, aldehydic, and with a little bit of a bite. It is interesting. I do think for the majority of people, what they're looking for nowadays, it probably wouldn't work so well. So that one is more like a novelty slash oddity in this entire line when you compare it to the other scents, that for some people, is gonna be a great hidden gem spring and summertime scent. That's gonna take us to 2015 and a big, big release in 2015. And this is actually the last one done by Francis Kirkshawn out of all the ones we're gonna talk about here. So basically after this one, the fragrance line got handed off to a number of different perfumers and it is Ultramol. Pear, cinnamon, vanilla, amber, and lavender, some of the notes in the scent here. It also has mint as well, so it's kind of tied in note-wise with the fragrance releases that came before it. This one still works really well. If you're looking for a scent that will get you compliments, that has great performance for an evening out, especially in fall and winter and spring, Ultramol will crush it. 
It's got a nice bubblegummy sweetness off the top. Not overdone to me anyway. The pear is nice and fresh as well. As it dries down, you get more of those spices that come out, more warmth and sweetness. And that one was a hype beast, hype monster. Everybody wanted it. And there are actually some clones of that fragrance that are extremely popular as well. Stuff like 9 p.m. by Afnon or Rom Silver by Latafa. Those fragrances both smell similar to Ultramal. Then we go to 2016, and that gave us Lamal Eau Fraiche. Now, technically, this one is Popeye Eau Fraiche because there are other Eau Fraiches that came out after this which have different bottle designs, but it's the same fragrance. So, for example, Superman Eau Fraiche. And it looked like for a minute that they were going to just be doing, you know, limited edition bottles versions of this fragrance each year, but then that stopped, which is unfortunate because this one is also really good. Mint, vanilla, tonka, aldehydes, neroli, and sage. Some of the notes in this fragrance, obviously with it being named Eau Fraiche, it is a fresher take on this style of fragrance. It does still have that sweetness though. It's got that, again, almost bubblegum sort of sweetness, but really, really nicely done. That airiness that it has, that aldehydic vibe is just pulled off masterfully here. And this is one that frankly, I wish was a little easier to find. Sometimes it does sell out and then it will come back in stock. It's that whole song and dance we've talked about on this channel a bunch of different times. So this one for spring, summer, and fall, it is a fantastic attention grabber. Again, very good performance with this. And even though Eau was hyped when it came out and people really liked it, it is completely under the radar at this point. So if you can find a bottle of Eau and you like the Lamal DNA, pick this stuff up, you won't regret it. That wasn't the only release from 2016 though. Also had this one, Essence de Parfum. And this bottle style got reused for another fragrance we'll talk about here in a second. This one is a leather fragrance and it never seemed to take off in a really big way. So there's also Tonka, Vanilla, Lavender, and Cardamom in here. It's not the same, but it's kind of in the same ballpark as C.H. Prevé from Carolina Herrera. So that sort of sweet, wearable leather with a good amount of spices. That's what you're gonna get here. I actually think it's another one that's very good. And at this point, once again, like Eau under the radar. If you want a wearable designer leather that people really gravitate toward, you should check this out. The problem with it is that it's hard to find at discounters in the US. Pretty much everything else we're gonna talk about here today, you can usually find much easier than this one. Don't pay crazy marked up prices for it. Then we're skipping forward to 2018 because 2017 just had the holiday limited edition, which there are a bunch of those for this fragrance line. And it had Superman Eau Fraiche. So a rebottling of Popeye Eau Fraiche. So not really anything new, just a couple different bottles in 2017. But 2018 gave us this one, which is in the Navy. It has mint, vanilla, ambergris, and aquatic notes as some of the notes in the fragrance, and it smells a little bit similar to something like Versace Eros. It's gonna get you in that style, in that wheelhouse, the way that the mint comes across here off the top. So this is one that's gonna work really well spring, summer, and fall, daytime or evening. It's not really as fresh as you might expect, like a really high heat summertime fragrance to be. So that's why you're gonna get a little more usability out of this one. It's not just like really fleeting, fresh citrus. It does have a little heft to it as it dries down. And I know a bunch of you agree with me on this one, but In the Navy is kind of an unsung hero. It's a scent that not many people are wearing, not many people know about, but if you are looking for a fragrance that has really high levels of versatility, compliment factor, mass appeal, that does the job. I mean, that'll hit just as hard as Eros as far as that goes, but people don't really know about it or wear it that much because at the end of the day, it's a limited edition of a fragrance that came out, you know, going on five years ago now. Then we go to 2019, pretty big release in 2019, Le Beau. Now, I need to really drive this home. This is Le Beau. This is Le Beau Mall or Le Beau Mail. So don't get these confused. If for some reason you thought you were buying this, but you bought this or vice versa, probably wouldn't be too happy. So Le Beau, this one they gave us one of those very simplistic note breakdowns, bergamot, coconut, tonka. Short, simple, to the point. And this does do things very differently. This is completely different from the fragrances that came before it. This one has that sweet coconut right in the forefront. 
That's what this is focusing on here. It's a, a tropical sweet fragrance made for warm weather, but like a lot of the fragrances we're talking about here, it does have a decent amount of heft to it as it dries down. That Tonka is very prominent. So what that means is that realistically, you could wear that one year round. It's just one of those scents that works really well. So LeBeau, completely different than anything else here other than one we're gonna talk about in a second, which will make sense. I'm sure you already know what I'm talking about. And it does share that same bottle style, Essence de Parfum. Only they put a leaf over his uh, unit with LeBeau. Now we skip forward to 2020, which was just a great year. But it did give us this, Le Mans Le Parfum. This is another biggie. So I would say just as far as the level of hype goes for the Le Mans fragrances, Ultramal in 2015 was huge. Eau Fraiche, pretty big. Le Beau, pretty big. But then this was another huge one. The hype behind this uh, definitely eclipses the hype of Le Beau and Eau Fraiche. And for me, this is there with Ultramal as being probably the two, to this point, most typed flankers in the entire line. So this one has lavender, vanilla woods, cardamom, and iris as some of the notes. And this one basically takes the DNA from the original one, reworks it into a more modern fragrance style, and takes it more from a daytime style of scent. Most people would think of this one as more of a, a day scent and reworks it into more of an evening scent. It's classy, but at the same time, you can easily wear it casually. Fantastic fragrance. La Mala Parfum, one of the best here. And then 2020 also gave us Aviator. Mint, violet leaf, and woods. Some of the notes in the fragrance. It smells a bit similar to CH Men by Carolina Herrera. It has that same sort of sweetness to it. In CH Men, it's sort of a sugary leather type of scent. Here, you just have those three notes, mint, violet leaf, and, and woods, but still yet, it does smell similar to the Herrera. I will say though, it has really good usability. It's another fragrance made for mass appeal. Maybe it's a little bit simplistic, but it's pretty well done. On the whole, when you stack it up against most of these others, I think they're better than Aviator, but, Aviator is a great grab-and-go kind of fragrance. Like a lot of the fragrances in the line, it does have that, that bit of sweetness that carries on from the opening into the dry down. It has good wearability, good versatility. It's just when you pair it up against a lot of these other ones, it maybe doesn't have quite the same impact that some of the other scents have. Still yet, nothing really wrong with it. It just has similarities to you know some other popular fragrances out there and also some similarities to this one, which came right after it. 2021's on board. Bergamot, Tonka, Geranium, and Amber. This does have a little bit of a similarity to Aviator, but I would say between the two that I prefer this one. It does have that sweetness, the Tonka and Amber, and it comes across in a similar way to Aviator, but it is fresher. It's easier to wear in spring and summer. It doesn't come across quite as heavy, and to me, it just smells a little bit more refined, more appealing, and has a little more versatility to it. Not that Aviator is not versatile. It's just in high heat situations, I wouldn't really go for Aviator, but I would go for this. And in my mind, I kind of link these three in the Navy, on board, and Aviator. And for me, in the Navy and on board are not redundant to own those two, and I think those are the two best. But I do think it starts to get close to redundant with Aviator and on board. So at that point, it's just like, well, which one are you going to lose of the three? Aviator, because on board is close enough and then in the Navy, put those together, good to go. 2022 gives us Le Beau Le Parfum. So now we have Le Beau, Le Beau Le Parfum, and who knows what comes next, Le Beau Elixir? It wouldn't surprise me, honestly. Pineapple, Iris, Coconut, Tonka, and Woods, and yeah, this is pretty much what you would expect. It's another fragrance focusing on that coconut, giving you sort of a tropical vibe, but it's more grown up, a little bit darker, than the original Le Beau. And Le Beau Le Parfum is another fragrance that did not work that well for me when I initially got it in, even more so than Le Beau. Actually, Le Beau Le Parfum, I was not a huge fan of. Through the mid, specifically, it smelled a little bit off. So it's another one that if you get it in, you spray it on, and you don't like it initially, do give it some more wearing, do give it some more time. You may come around to really enjoy it. It almost takes on a, a light chocolatey feel to it as it dries down. It is a nice addition to the line. A lot of people love Le Beau Le Parfum, and I have come around to like it a lot more than initially. And now the final release for this guide, the newest release, Lamal Elixir from this year, 2023. Bottle looks 
awesome. I think this is the best looking one. I don't think it's close. I really, really dig this. They even upgraded the little pull tab. It's got a little more to it now instead of being basically just something that looks like it should be thrown away. I mean, you can see there, <laughs> that's a pretty big difference. I mean, it's the small things. Now this has a similarity to Le Mans Le Parfum. So out of everything here, that's what this smells the closest to. It's got honey, tobacco, vanilla, and lavender as some of the notes in the fragrance, along with tonka and benzoin. It smells awesome in the air. Like it just smells fantastic. I wore this on maybe one of the last cool days before we head into summer, like full bore. And it just really was a 10 out of 10. So yeah, a bit of a similarity to Le Mans Le Parfum. When you first spray it on, you're gonna get that uh, that vibe, but it's not quite as powdery as Le Mans Le Parfum is, and the tobacco, the honey there, really helps elevate the fragrance, just gives it this different facet. For me, as far as cool weather fragrances go in this lineup, it is just lights out. You've got Ultramol for like your, your clubbing, your night out, your more youthful kind of vibe. You have Le Mans Le Parfum for your more elegant sort of situations. And then you have Le Mans Elixir, which is like a combination of the two almost. You can do about anything with it. And all three of those are just like the top of their game. And this one, even though it is the newest, I've spent the least amount of time with it. This is already quickly becoming one of, if not my favorites in the whole lineup. So there we go, it ran really long, but we got 12 fragrances there and kind of a quick overview of each one. Thank you guys for hanging with me. Let me know in the comments which fragrance from this lineup or this line you like the most. Stay safe out there and I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.